hi from one of Germany's most beautiful opera houses. I'm gonna be on stage in a few minutes as a nobleman and serial killer ready for murder. And I'm really looking forward to this because the crisis has been a real threat for the whole cultural life. But before I go on stage, let me invite you to come with me on a flight that took place just before the crisis set in. A flight on Iberia's Airbus A330 in their business class with lots of highs and lows from Madrid to Havana. Ya vamos a Cuba. Hello and welcome on this flight report from Madrid to Havana on Iberia's Airbus 330 in their business class. Uh, which has a one-to-one -one configuration, so that I know already, and I'm really looking forward to this flight, and especially the trip, because it's going to be with my dad, it's a little present to him, and we're going to have a very nice trip together, I guess, in the Caribbean. In the background, you see the Velasquez Lounge of Madrid Airport in Terminal 4S, that's the satellite terminal of the airport. It's very nice and spacious and airy. It's got wonderful views of the apron and many, many planes. And there's also a very good food and a bar, but you have to go around the corner to really find it. And they have really good stuff over there. So follow me on this trip. I hope it's gonna be a great one, I'm pretty sure. Before going to the plane, let's have another look at the Velasquez Lounge in the International Satellite Terminal 4S. There's lots of hot and cold food options available. There's plenty of drinks, including Spanish cava instead of champagne. Coffee tastes really great. Then there's lots of space and there's a quiet area and the showers and bathrooms are really nice and clean too. But now let's walk through this stunning terminal to our beautiful Airbus A330 that will take us to the Caribbean. This Siberia business class with its staggered seat configuration is still pretty new. It's well designed with light colors and it's got a nice airy feeling. Every seat has eyelaxes because there's only two middle seats and all window seats are single seats. <laughs> So here I'm sitting in the Airbus 330 of Iberia. Uh, I'm sitting on seat 2L. My dad is sitting on seat 1J. That's the first two seats on the window side, on the right window side. Looking really forward to this flight. Now, now before we take off, I just give you a little tour of the seat. So it starts here with the television. The TV monitor has bright colors and it's got a very responsive touch screen. Then there's space for the feet, no foot coffin here. Then there's some extra storage down here for the shoes. Then there's USB and power sockets in the console over here. There's storage down there and more storage for a tablet or a phone in the console. Then there's more space for your headset and the amenity kit. And there's a seat control and the remote control for the TV and the armrest can be lowered into the seat for more space. So that's a nice start, I would say. And of course you always have a wonderful view out onto planes. Now during our beautiful climb, let's have a look again at the seat. All seats have aisle access as I said and the window seats are either directly by the window with a console between seat and aisle offering more privacy or they're directly at the aisle with the console between seat and window. These ones make getting up a little easier. All seats have a large tray for your drink and there is also enough storage and they can be adjusted gradually until a very comfortable 180 degrees flat bed. The provided pillow is big and the comforters are really cozy. How does the amenity kit look like? Well, it's well designed and great to use after the flight. It contains amenities such as toothbrush, toothpaste, a comb, earplugs, socks and of course eye shades. 
the amenities are all rather basic, but functional. Now, a real highlight on board this plane from the very beginning is this beautiful and very responsive interactive 3D flight map. You can zoom in and out, you can run a play mode that shows the whole world and you can explore the globe a little by zooming into various regions. You can go back to your current position, you can see the plane from various angles and you get all technical information around your flight. Altogether a really nice system. Service started about 45 minutes into the flight with a wet towel, a drink and some nuts. Time to have a look at the menu on today's 10 hour long flight and a clear highlight here were the wines. Instead of nuts, which were neither warm nor salted, you could have had olives too. Shortly afterwards, lunch was served on one tray and that's before the corona crisis set in, so I guess there's no big changes here today. I got a bouillon, salad and two slices of cold beef as an appetizer and here you see the complete menu for this flight. As main course I got fish, which was actually really good, but the tray just doesn't look nice when nothing is being exchanged and it gets very messy very quickly. The vegetarian option was really tasty too, pasta with walnuts and dessert was simple but okay. So here we have a little tour of the very small bathroom in business class. Um, it's very basic, normal sink. The only special thing is actually, according to the label, the Iberia Business hand soap and there's some hand lotion. But that's it actually. So it's really very tiny. With some good coffee I started working a bit on my tablet. I checked some messages and I also listened to some music while my dad enjoyed his flat bed and he slept really well. Before we go to the less beautiful part of this flight I want to give you some information on Iberia Plus the frequent flyer program of Iberia, which is a great program, especially for flights between Spain and North, Central and South America. Redemption rates are really great here, fees are low and there's also a very good miles and cash option. Pause the video for a moment if you want to read the details. until landing in Havana. I can only say I'm very happy about my vacation with my dad and looking forward to that very much. If not, I would be really mad right now because business class service on Iberia is non-existent. After dinner was served, the crew disappeared. They dimmed the cabin very early and um, maybe hoping that everybody would just fo would fall asleep like birds and they never came back again. They're sitting over there in the galley um, and nobody came since then to ask maybe if somebody would like to have a glass of water or maybe even a fancy drink. That didn't happen. Nobody would care if people are doing fine or so. Well, they just disappeared. I emptied maybe six or seven cans of Coke Zero and I had to bring back every single empty can back to the galley because nobody would come and clean up the tables. So as much as uh, the seat is actually very comfy and beautiful, as much the service is just awful. It's non-existent. It's not bad service. It's just non-service. No service at all. And that's very frustrating as a guest. The menu talks about various drinks and snacks that are available throughout the flight. But this is how it really looked. Now, guys of Iberia, this is not fancy, it's not cool and it's not welcoming at all. One hour before landing, cold cuts were served as dinner, which in my eyes was a bit too light an option. But anyway, here I was already looking forward to some great food in Havana, so I didn't bother too much. 
Thank God the wine was really good on this flight. Anyway, since nothing more happened on this flight and Havana airport is really dark at night, let's have a short look at the return flight from Miami to Madrid and visit the American Airlines flagship lounge at Miami airport. But before that, let's enjoy for a moment some impressions of beautiful Cuba. And we've arrived at Miami Airport and the American Airlines flagship lounge, which you can use as a business class passenger on international flights with any one world airline like Iberia. Even though it's called flagship lounge, it looks a little bit old fashioned, but there's lots of space, there's resting areas, a business corner, there's lots and lots of magazines on display and there's good showers too. And when it comes to catering, standards are really high for a lounge in the United States with lots of various hot and cold food options and some good champagne too. Our flight back to Madrid took off late at night and not much happened except for this beautiful takeoff above Miami Beach. So I took pictures of food of course, starting with nicely arranged salmon and less nice yet tasty raviolis. But breakfast was a really hard landing, cheap and with the driest croissant of my life, almost inedible and that in business class. The staff by the way was even a bit less welcoming than on our flight to Cuba which earlier had seemed close to impossible to me. So even though the seat is really really great on Iberia's long haul business class, I was not completely sad when we finally landed in Madrid. I simply didn't feel welcome here. However, as I said, the hard product is really good for a European airline, so if you want to fly over the Atlantic with miles and want a good business class seat that changes into a comfortable bed, this is still a fantastic bargain with very good miles redemption rates and almost no fees. But if you really want to get treated nicely, I know other airlines for that. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little excursion into the time from before Corona and on Iberia's business class in the Airbus A330. Let me know what you thought about that and give me all your ideas in the comments. Please stay healthy, stay tuned, there's going to be more videos from the time before the crisis, during Corona and hopefully soon afterwards too. And then see you again very soon here at Travel Sing Fly. Thank you.